In this episode, we'll be discussing the anatomy of the male urethra. The urethra in men is a tubular structure contained within the vascular corpus spongiosum and the glans penis. It has a submucosa which contains smooth muscle, connective tissue, and elastic tissue, and its caliber is about 24 to 26 French at the meatus and is at its widest in the bulbar urethra, about 36 French. The male urethra is generally divided into an anterior and posterior segment. The posterior segment begins distal to the bladder neck and ends at the perineal membrane, while the anterior segment begins at the perineal membrane and continues distally to the meatus. The most proximal aspect of the urethra is the prostatic urethra, which travels the length of the prostate and is made up of transitional epithelium. A urethral crest lies in the midline and is flanked by prostatic sinuses on either side. These have perforations, which represent prostatic ducts, which carry prostatic fluid from the lateral lobes into the urethra. At its midpoint, the urethra turns anywhere from 0 to 9 degrees, but 35 degrees is what's typically quoted. This turn defines the preprostatic segment, which is proximal to the midpoint, and the prostatic segment, which is distal to the midpoint. The preprostatic sphincter is surrounded by circular smooth muscle. The vera montanum is a widening and protrusion of the urethral crest. It has a prostatic utricle, which is a mullerian remnant located at the apex of the vera montanum. There are also ejaculatory ducts that are located on either side of the utricle. The next segment is the membranous urethra, which on average is about two to two and a half centimeters in length and spans between the prostatic apex and the perineal membrane. This represents the narrowest portion of the urethra and it is surrounded by an external urethral sphincter. The sphincter is often called the striated sphincter, but in truth contains both smooth and striated muscle bundles. The sphincter is horseshoe shaped and does not connect dorsally. The lumen consists of stratified or pseudostratified columnar epithelium, and this area, because it's flanked by two more fixed areas, is more prone to injury during pelvic fracture. The bulbar urethra is about three to four centimeters in length and extends distally to the level of the suspensory ligament. As we discussed, it has the largest luminal caliber and is made up of stratified, pseudostratified columnar epithelium. The bulbal urethral glands, or Cowper's glands, empty into this region at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions. Importantly, Cowper's fluid, also known as pre-ejaculate, lubricates the urethra and neutralizes acid from any remaining urine. Mucin-secreting Latre's glands can also be found in the walls of the bulbous urethra. The penile or pendulous urethra is about 15 centimeters in length and surrounded by the corpus spongiosum. It is made up of stratified, pseudostratified epithelium, but the glands is made up of squamous epithelium. Recesses called lacunae of Morgani that extend into Littre's glands are found in the lateral walls of the penile urethra. The distal aspect of the penile urethra is a saccular dilation termed the fossa navicularis that terminates at the urethral meatus. Let's take a moment to note that the position of the urethral lumen within the corpora spongiosum changes depending on which segment of the urethra we're in. If you look at figure A, you'll notice that the lumen in the bulbar urethra is located very dorsally in the spongiosum, whereas figures B and C, which is more distal, centers the urethra a little bit more in the spongiosum. One of the unique aspects of the urethra is that it has a dual arterial supply. Proximally, it's supplied by the bulbal urethral and circumflex arteries in an antegrade fashion. However, distally, it's the dorsal penile artery after supplying the glands that supplies the rest of the urethra via a retrograde fashion. This is why the urethra can be mobilized extensively, divided, and then sewn back together. Additionally, there are prostatic branches off the inferior vesicle and middle rectal arteries which supply the prostatic urethra. Venous drainage is via the periurethral veins, which drain into the circumflex veins and ultimately drain into the deep dorsal vein and the prostatic venous plexus. Bulbar veins are also drained into the internal pudendal vein proximally. In regards to lymphatics, 
The distal male urethra drains to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. The bulbar, membranous, and prostatic urethra drain to the iliac, obturator, and presacral lymph nodes. Crossover may occur at the prepubic lymphatic plexus. Finally, as for innervation, the pudendal nerve supplies somatic motor and sensory innervation. The pelvic plexus supplies autonomic innervation, with the parasympathetics coming from S2 to S4 and sympathetics from T11 to L2. And that wraps up this lesson. Thanks for watching.